Annyeong, I'm Chef Petulia. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make barley bibimbap, Korean mixed vegetables with rice. It's called bori bibimbap. It's a common street food at the street markets, usually with 12 to 20 different types of vegetable preparations. But today, I'm gonna show you how to make an easy version with a delicious gochujang sauce that you can bottle up and probably sell because it's that good. And I'll also show you how to make it's a baby cabbage soup that's commonly served with this bibimbap on the streets. So let's get started! First, let's make the barley rice. I'm gonna mix one cup of pressed barley with one cup of short grain kaba rice. Kaba rice is sprouted brown rice. They both have a similar cooking time of about 20 minutes, so you can cook them together and they'll cook evenly. Rinse your barley and rice mixture about two to three times. Then add about two cups of clean water. You can easily measure how much water you need for your rice by placing your hand on top of the rice. And when the water is just hovering over your knuckles, then you know you have just enough water Water to make perfect rice every time. I'm gonna pop this into my rice cooker and turn it on to a turbo setting which is gonna take about 20 minutes to cook. If you want the stovetop method to cooking your barley rice, I'm going to link this recipe on the description box below. So check it out there on my website. You'll find how to make this barley rice on the stovetop. I never make rice on the stovetop because I have a rice cooker and you should get one too. Next, let's make our namur, which are seasoned Korean vegetable side dishes. For that, you're gonna need two 12 ounce bags of soybean sprouts. This is called kong namur. You're also gonna need three bunches of spinach. And this is called shikumchi namur. Heat a large pot of water on high heat. Generously season this pot of water with salt. Bring it to a fierce boil. Then blanch your bean sprouts for about 30 seconds or so. Give it a good stir, then transfer them over into a bowl with cold water. If you have ice, that's great. Put them in an ice bath to stop them from cooking. Whenever you're blanching any vegetable, you want to cook them just enough so that they're barely cooked and they still maintain their crunch. Then we're going to blanch our spinach in the same pot of boiling water. I had to blanch my spinach in two separate batches because it was just a lot of volume. I like to get the stems in first because they take a few seconds longer to cook than the leafy tops and then I'll give it a good stir. It'll take about 20 to 30 seconds to blanch. Then transfer the spinach into a bowl of cold water or an ice bath. Rinse your bean sprouts and spinach in cold water. Make sure to wash your spinach really well because there's a lot of dirt. Drain off any excess water from the bean sprouts and drain off any excess water from the spinach. But with the spinach, what you're gonna have to do is take handfuls of it and squeeze out any excess water because it likes to grab into a lot of water and you really need to do the steps in order to have good shikumchi namu. Then cut your spinach into bite-sized pieces so that nobody chokes on a long piece of spinach. Let's season up our vegetables with toasted sesame seeds. It's gotta be toasted, otherwise you can't get the same flavor. Let's do two tablespoons for the soybean sprouts and then one tablespoon for the spinach. Then add one teaspoon of salt to each bowl and you can always season this to your your taste. Lastly, add two tablespoons of toasted sesame oil to each bowl. Once again, it's gotta be toasted. And now you just gotta get your hands in there and mix this up really well so that every part of the vegetable is seasoned thoroughly. You can put them into airtight containers and they last in the fridge for up to four to five days. There's nothing I love more than having homemade panchan in my refrigerator, prepped and ready to go for the rest of the week. Now moving on to the raw vegetables. I've got one head of red leaf lettuce called sangchu in Korean and one bunch of perilla leaves called genip. Chop your lettuce into half inch pieces, then rotate your cutting board and cut across into bite-sized pieces. 
transfer your lettuce into a large bowl. Pick your perilla leaves off the stems. If you've never tried perilla leaves, now is the time to try it. It's available at every Korean grocery store. It's kind of like a hybrid between basil and mint, but better. Bunch up your perilla leaves and chop it into bite-sized pieces. Then throw it into the same bowl as the lettuce. Wash your lettuce and perilla leaves until all the dirt is gone. Drain off any excess water and spin it dry in a salad spinner until it's completely dry. Next up, we have one small head of savoy cabbage. If you can't get savoy cabbage, you can just use regular green cabbage. Slice up your cabbage as thinly as possible. I know this could be a little bit difficult sometimes, but just do your best. And make sure to cut out the cores. Once you've sliced up your cabbage, go ahead and put it into a large bowl, wash them, then spin them dry. And our raw vegetable prep is done. Here I've put them into large airtight containers lined with a paper towel underneath to absorb any excess moisture. And this will last in your fridge for up to four to five days as well. Not only can you eat this with bibimbap, but you can also make a lot of salads throughout the week with this. Now for my favorite part of the recipe, the gochujang sauce. Into a medium bowl, add two tablespoons of toasted sesame seeds, one tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, you can also use apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of toasted sesame oil, six tablespoons or 110 grams of gochujang. This is Korean fermented chili paste. If you're a bit intimidated when you go to the Korean grocery store and what kind of gochujang to buy because there's like a bajillion of them, this is my favorite kind. It's by Hechandu and I buy the mild but it's still pretty spicy. Add two tablespoons of Korean miso paste. This is called pinjang. And if you're also wondering what kind of pinjang to buy at the Korean grocery store, this is my favorite. Suncheong Kong Denjang. It has a really nice depth of flavor to it. Lastly, add four tablespoons of 60 grams of water to loosen it up a little bit. Whisk until thoroughly combined. This sauce is so flavorful. I can probably bottle it up and sell it and make a lot of money off of it but I'm sharing it all with you guys. And what I like to do is I like to make a double batch of this and just keep it in the fridge. It's all made from fermented products, so it will last in your fridge for a while. Next up is the baby Napa cabbage soup called Uga Jikguk in Korean. This step is optional, but you know us Koreans, we love having soup with every meal. Into a small pot, add four cups of water, add three three inch pieces or 12 grams of kombu, add two tablespoons of tenjang and for my secret ingredients one teaspoon of mushroom seasoning you can find this mushroom seasoning easily at any good asian grocery store or you can buy them online you can pretty much use this as instant mushroom stock and add it to any soup base and give it a nice depth of flavor lastly add half a tablespoon of kochujang go ahead and whisk this up until everything is dissolved then place it over a low flame and gently simmer this for about 15 to 20 minutes without bringing it to a boil since boiling the kombu can result in a slimy broth while the broth is simmering away I'm going to chop up my putbechu also called young baby napa cabbage or baby cabbage young cabbage young napa cabbage whatever it's called I like to chop it into half inch pieces going across then chop in the opposite direction a few times so that it is bite-sized pieces it's a lot easier to eat this way a lot of Korean moms might be thinking like what the heck is this girl thinking why shouldn't she blanching this first I mean I, that's how my mom taught me as well and then I had to challenge her and I was like I don't think it's necessary to blanch the cabbage first before putting it in the soup so I tried it one day without blanching it and it worked out perfectly fine I told you mom. one thing about this baby cabbage is that it usually has a lot of dirt so you have to wash it really well I rinse it like three four five times until I don't see any more dirt okay my broth has been simmering for about 20 minutes, it's time to take out the kelp and add your putbechu, your baby cabbage. Now you can bring this up to a boil and simmer this for about 10-15 minutes until all the cabbage has been wilted down. Ta-da! Here's our baby cabbage soup. Now we're ready to plate up our pibimbap to go with it. First, I'm gonna scoop up some rice, which I already went ahead and fluffed up the rice when it was done cooking with my rice paddle. I'm using my measuring cup here 
as kind of a mold to shape the rice to make it look pretty. You know, I'm just bouging this up for the gram. In real life, I would have probably just thrown everything into a big bowl and mixed it up. And I would actually prefer eating it that way too. That's how they serve it out on the streets. I'm also gonna add some kimchi that I made a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave the recipe link in the description box and at the end of this video. I'm also adding some julienne carrots that I found in the fridge for a pop of color. I'm gonna finish this off with some crushed nori sheets and sesame seeds for garnish. You can serve the sauce in the bowl or you can serve it on the side like I did. I'm gonna ladle up some of my ugojikuk into a nice bowl for my side soup. For some reason, a Korean meal is not complete without a bowl of soup. It just goes straight to your soul. You know what I mean? And here is our vegan bibimbap meal. So nutritious and healthy. And I'm just like salivating watching this video while I'm editing this. Can't wait to eat this again. Finally, time for the taste test. And what you want to do is just pour some sauce all over and you just mix it. It's called pibimbap. Pibim means to mix. And I like to use my spoon and my chopstick to mix it together. Here it goes. It's kind of a messy bite. I should have grabbed the napkin. Oh well. Mmm, so good. I love the sauce. The sauce really makes it. We have a little bit of the kimchi. If you haven't checked out my kimchi recipe, go ahead and go check it out. It's a really, really good kimchi recipe. Mm. Okay, time to try the soup. Mm. It just like hits the spot, you know? This soup is so hot right now. It's like borderline burning my mouth, but it's so good. If you guys like this bibimbap recipe, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I have new vegan recipes, a lot of Korean recipes coming up for you soon. Ah, what are you gonna do? Ah, I don't know. Today is here. Bebulo, bebulo, but vegan chicken. I want to eat vegan.